only a vlog about the developments around the long wave radio. I started the project approximately say two weeks ago or so, three weeks ago and I had done many many uh, experiments. Try to make it a superheterodyne. Here is that local oscillator. Uh, try to make a IF amplifier for it. That was here. Here. Uh, it did not work, by the way. Anyway, no problems with that. It's a good IF amplifier, but the problems of uh, receiving a radio on long wave uh, lie somewhat deep. And at first, uh, one of these deeper problems is perhaps, I don't know that exactly, that perhaps the superhead, superheterodyne principle, does not work so well. Uh, there could be all kinds of reasons, say, for instance, to get the right frequency transformation, perhaps 455 kilocycles is not far away. Uh, from the frequency that you want to receive, but of course it must be possible anyway. I'm going to do more experiments perhaps, and I've made some coils here. For instance this coil for long wave it didn't work, it worked on the medium wave. This coil did not work, it was made for long wave, it didn't work. And I uh, went into the junk box in all these other coils, uh, but I found for instance that this coil, and this is originally a coil of out of an electronic organ, that it worked. I could receive long wave uh, radio stations with that coil and uh, that brought me to the idea to get into my um, box of coils and connect this 3.9 milli Henry coil. And this really really shitty, sorry for that word, coil worked perfect. I had not expected that at all. Uh, it had surely the best properties. And you can buy such a coil for small amount of money anyway. But this proved to be the best coil. After all these experiments with all kinds of coils. And there is a very important thing to tell. Um, it is also related, of course, when we look at the radio theory, to the length of the antenna and where the antenna hangs, uh, the capacitive effect of the antenna compared the antenna wire, its capacitive effect compared to ground, the length of course, because we are in a very long wavelength here. When you look for instance on this radio, the long wave tells us that we are between uh, 1987 meters and 1287, so 1.9 kilometers and 1.3 kilometers. So that means that the ideal antenna, and then I mean a full wave antenna, is uh, that has the best properties, at least in radio theory. I have to laugh a, li laugh a little bit about it, but anyway, must be 1.2 kilometers. Um, uh, when you want to hang that out of your room. Well, that's of course no option, but of course you, we know the halfway, uh, sorry, the ha half wave antenna, and the quarter wave antenna, and the one eighth wave antenna, and all these uh, different antennas can work. And of course in such a beautiful small radio, let me open it for a while. We have this long wave antenna. 
And this is of course a cheap, very cheap radio out of the 1980s. Perhaps it cost it uh, in those days 10 guilders or 20 guilders, but it has very good properties and you can receive the long wave very well. I had to repair it a little bit, but anyway. Um, so the in, inside here there must be a kind of trick. I don't have the schematic, so I cannot get into detail about how this radio works. And there are many ways that a radio can work. I'm almost sure that it's, that it's a superheterodyne radio, but anyway. Well, let's listen now to the radio setup that I made and I want to demonstrate three antennas and their effect. Now that uh, cheap coil of 3.9 millihenry is connected to the input. Let's listen. I, well, I have to Perhaps put the camera down. Yes. Uh, of course, we, we must uh, connect the antenna. And I have three antenna capacitors. That's perhaps interesting to tell. The first one is, you can hear the noise now, is 33 picofarad. That's the gray one. And then we have here the 390 picofarad. And here is a 100 picofarad capacitor and of course all these capacitors have an effect on the radio reception. So when you couple in uh, a radio signal to uh, a first antenna stage, for instance here, you can see it here, this is by the way the receiver, but I don't want to uh, say focus too much on it because this was made for the AM band around 1.4 megacycles and now we are on long wave. And that's a completely other frequency band where the inductance of the coil and the tank circuit must be much bigger compared to AM radio. Anyway, uh, that's why I tell also that we I have here the 3.9 millihenry antenna tank circuit. Uh, anyway, and there's no 4 meter indoor here, that's what I wanted to tell. There is an outdoor antenna now, an indoor antenna didn't work. The coil, well I have to I have uh, say, paid attention to that coil. So you can use this part of the circuit for the, that's exactly the same, for the uh, long wave radio and use that tiny coil with its very good properties. And here three antenna capacitors that work together uh, related to the length of the antenna, where the antenna is, in or indoor or outdoor, and uh, the properties of the coil and the tuning capacitor. And I want to demonstrate that, so let's first look at the outside antenna, 10 meters long, in my garden, and it's a pure wire. And I'm going to connect it now to the 33 picofarad capacitor. Let's listen. I have to say this is a signal tracer with a very high audio amplification. Also important, and I'm going to work further on that radio. Perhaps it's an audio filter, etc. This is the BBC on long wave. Very weak, anyway. And now I go to the another. Uh, coupling capacitor to the antenna and it's now 390 picofarad. Big noise. But 
no better reception. And now I go to 100 picofarad as antenna capacitor. 100. And here, when we tune the tuning capacitor to the highest position, uh, we are receiving a French radio station on long wave. But because of the fact that the um, antenna capacitor is too high, uh, it drowns a little bit in the noise. So I go back to the 3, 3, so 33 picofarad capacitor that proves to be in this case the best capacitor in combination with the uh, the used antenna the used antenna anyway let's listen this is at French station and now the BBC. It's very, very, very weak, and it's uh, uh, the radio does not work better compared to this uh, 1980s radio called Century. Beautiful brand, of course, no one knows that brand, but it is a good brand. It was a good brand. And perhaps I will switch it on for a moment to uh, get a kind of um, th th that we can compare it. Again, one experiment, 100 picofarad now. With, with 100 picofarad, the antenna gets have more heavy coupled to the uh, the input stage of the, the first transistor gets more heavy heavy coupled to the antenna that means that the resonance frequency of the input circuit goes down that means that suddenly when you change here the uh, the antenna capacitor, the whole radio circuit here, starts to act in a different way. The frequency goes down. When, the, when the, there is a heavier load, say the antenna here is a capacitive load, it's an inductive load, uh, that means that the resonance frequency of the tank circuit is damped by the way that the antenna works, but in the ideal situation, the antenna uh, works together with the tank circuit and lifts up its resonance. I'm f on 14 minutes on my camera, so I want to show finally the good results. So this cheap radio of the 1980s works much better than my radio, but of course I'm a radio amateur and like to do experiments. And perhaps this was uh, an interesting experiment.
This is that same radio station. Thanks for watching. A lot of noise here. And not so much noise here. Whatever.